<clears throat> Previously on Dick Moves. It was 30 years ago today that Dick Moves by Planet Cool made it to the top spot in the Billboard chart. You know, <laughs> I'd forgotten just how bad this song is. Barnaby! But what I'm asking is, when will I get the next Next check, so I can move back home and escape all these insufferable hotel stops. There stock. is no more home and no more money, Dick. It's all gone. Dick? Fifi! It's Dad! <laughs> Hooray! He's like Willy Wonka, without the child entrapment, or wonderment, or the chocolate factory. He's actually not like Willy Wonka at all. This is about a glorious future. The universe has chosen to reconnect me with those that I love. Pop Play presents Dick Moves, a comedy in four parts. This is part two. Later in the guest house, Gwen is leaving as Barnaby approaches with the Dick Standee, head taped back in place badly. Wow, you could wait till I get all of my stuff out before you pack it with all of Dick's junk. Oh, I've found the hotel. They'll be sending Dick stuff over in a while. That give you enough time? Gwen contemplates Barnaby holding on to the Dick Redford standee. He'd be lost without you. Oh, I've been doing this so long. I wonder if I would be lost without him. Why do you stay, though? He's been miserable to you for years. He fumbles through business. He burns through cash. He's clearly not a man who makes hit records anymore. Dick's changed. Dick hasn't changed, Gwen. The world has. Dick sidles towards the guest house, sunlight glinting off his tracksuit. Having overheard. If wearing hot pants and making songs with three words and seven writers of what it takes to succeed, then Barnaby's actually right. I haven't changed, and I'm proud of it. Oh, Dick. You're holding on to ancient history. You go on and on about the music business, the old business, the way it was. Don't you remember? Music used to make people happy. Gwen rolls her eyes at him. It did, and people knew it. They didn't need a game show smashing them over the head with who's the best performer and how they're supposed to feel. They just knew it. We were the ones delivering happiness. Now music is mere wallpaper, a side dish. People grocery shop and take elevators and do TikToks with our art eking out of shitty little phone speakers. You can't change the future by looking back. Well, I'm going to try. You're a fool on a fool's errand. I'm a magician in a world that has forgotten about magic. Dick strikes a noble pose. A magician who's wearing my tracksuit. The hotel has all my clothes. It's the only thing I could find that didn't remind me of a geriatric Carmen Miranda. Actually, I came to an arrangement with the hotel. Your stuff will be here tonight. Yet again, Barnaby picks up the pieces for you. I like to call it job security. And with that, Barnaby is off. Yes, well, don't get so cocksure. The help. Am I right? This is not my problem. I'll be off to Thousand Oaks in a couple of hours. Oh, yes. Still work in the old people's home, do you? The old people's home that I own. You used to be in the music industry, too, once. And then I grew up and started a successful business. But do you ever feel like you've given up on your dreams at all? Along with the alcohol and the fun? No, Dick. I feel like I've taken everything and built a life based in reality. Reality is highly overrated. So are your ridiculous dreams. Dreams are never ridiculous. They are when you disappear and leave everyone back where they started. I won't let you do that to our daughter again. Dick has moved closer to her. He has unzipped the front of the jogging jacket. Gwen stops. She suddenly looks a little frightened. Oh, God. Gwen doesn't back off as they share the close space for a beat. I know. This is where we used to, um... Do you want to give it a go? Gwen tries not to smile. She turns away from Dick, breaking the moment. Dick deflates. You could stay? If I stayed, I'd down that hidden bottle of scotch in the pantry and it would all start all over again. Well, that sounds fun. I think not. Gwen contemplates Dick once more, then exits back into the guest house. Yes, well, at least tell me where the damn scotch is hidden. Everyone is so selfish. Later, back in the front yard, Dick sits in a lawn chair drinking a glass of scotch. Fifi, Marty, and the baby wave Gwen off as she drives back to her home. Various racks of Dick's clothes line the yard, dropped off by the hotel. Barnaby sorts through them. Well, I, for one, am sorry to see her go. You don't mean that. You're right, I don't. But I know you'd like me to mean it, so I do a little bit. Just for you. 
I'm touched. I mean, I did marry her. Couldn't live with her, wanted to kill her, divorced her, called her that night for a little angry sex, regretted that, then felt a bit lonely, so called her again. I, I, what was my point? You were apologizing for chasing away my daughter's grandmother. Ah, yes. Now that the fun police have gone, I can tell you about my gig. You're doing a show? Only been here two days, and already I've got a showcase of my new creation, Flamber Ahead. Really? A solo show? Oh, yes. At the Bull and Last. Booked it myself. Some very important people are coming, and you could be one of them. Ray Parker Jr. is on the list. How do you do this? What? Make it so difficult to stay mad at you. Well, years of practice. Will you come? Of course I'll come. Bull and Last? Yes, met the owner last night. He's a fan. Marty approaches from behind. I'll come. That's not really necessary, is it? No, really, I'd like to. Fine, just don't get in my eye line. Your face makes me forget that I'm famous. Marty ponders his face as Dick jauntily jogs into the house. It's the next day and Barnaby drives the tour van towards the Bull and Last. Dick strums his guitar in the back seat. I don't need Rod. You never have. I've got gigs. We can make it happen, Dick. We? We. No, it's me. Me. You assist happening. I got you a proper sponsor that's paying for your PA and your rented lights and your fog machine. That's making it happen. Not really. Anyone could do that. Who's the sponsor then? Nike? Apple? Coors Light? It was short notice, so I had to go a little more grassroots than that. Oh, what? Like Samuel Adams? Oh, I know. One of those new hip marijuana joints. Flanks heating and air conditioning. Well, that doesn't sound very sexy. Well, it's Joe Flank himself. You'll meet him tonight. See, this is what I'm talking about. You don't see the big picture. You'll need to think more like you're at least a percentage point fabulous because you work for me. I'll keep that in mind. You don't know what it's like to be famous, Barnaby. The burden, the awareness. But I can't blame you, really. I don't say thank you enough. You don't have to say thank you. No, I didn't finish. I don't say thank you enough because you aren't quite getting it. Oh? Just know that you could be so much more than you are. Noted. But you're not fired. Okay, good to know. Now let's go and make the magic happen! It's lesbian night in the Bull and Last. The Union Jacks have been gussied up with a few rainbow flags, and the bar is semi-full of lesbian-looking cowgirls, eating, drinking, and talking loudly. Dick saunters in, scanning the crowd. Well, well, nice to see I can still pack in the ladies. Gavin trots out from behind the bar, greeting Dick. So glad that you came, Dick. This is going to be great. It'll be like the time I played a Danish brothel with Brian Ferry. Funnily enough, they served Danish there too, but you wouldn't eat it. Brian and I had free drinks all night, which, if you've ever been to a Danish brothel, you'll know is nigh impossible. Dick looks expectantly at Gavin. There's a long pause as Gavin realized what's being asked. Free drinks, right. I'll get you sorted. Let me take you backstage. It's lesbian night tonight, so I'm sticking you in the gents. No one will bother you there. Lesbians? Oh, they're a good crowd. Big drinkers. Huh. I like lesbians. Jodie Foster once went straight for me. But later I found out that she thought it was Annie Lennox. You hooked up with Jodie Foster? It might have been Melanie Griffith. I was quite drunk. Dick's dressing room is indeed the men's room. Near the urinal sits a small covered table, on which a sad little procession of snacks and drinks has been laid. Uh, Barnaby passed on your dressing room requirements. They both stare at the sad little table. He had to make a couple of substitutions. Well, it's not quite cocktails at the Soho house. Right. Well, I'll leave you to it. Barnaby pops his head around the door. You about ready? The place is filled up nicely. Joe Flank brought his family. Oh, and uh, Sven's here. Great. He uh, brought Rod with him. Uh, no, Rod. It's showtime, and Dick squeezes onto the stage. Behind him is a large, slightly askew nylon Flank's heating and air sign. Fifi sits with the slightest of smiles on her face, wearing the old backstage pass from her kitchen. Dick looks out to see Sven and Rod at the back of the room. Rod gives him the slightest of nods. Cunt. Dick comes to himself, getting in the zone. He closes his eyes and a smattering of clapping. 
morphs and becomes a huge crowd roar. As Dick opens his eyes, he fantasizes he is standing on the massive stage of the Hollywood Bowl. Dick is dressed in a resplendent, sequined suit, and behind him is the best band the money can buy. A huge, ornate wail hangs over his head, and in big, bright lights, a sign comes to life. Dick Redford's Flambro Head. Dick checks the front box seats, and there is Sting, smiling and giving him the thumbs up. He looks closer to see a single tear streak Sting's cheek. Dick smiles. He closes his eyes, and he is... Show us your tits! Back at the bowl and last. Back on the shitty stage. However, Dick is still smiling. He approaches the mic. The Dick Redford charm is back. I'm Dick Redford, and I'm going to take you back in time to my hometown. Flamber ahead. Barnaby unfurls another nylon banner that reads Flamber ahead. Barnaby adjusts it so it does not block the flank's heating and air sign, but he's just not having much luck. After knocking Dick in the head with the sign several times, Dick turns to him. Enough with the sign. Copy that, boss. Break a leg. Tonight, we find ourselves not here in a third-rate, health-code-inflicted quasi-pub, but a fishing vessel a generation ago. As our hero sails toward home and first meets the great white whale, great off-white whale. Fifi leans into Marty. This is actually not shit. I like it. Reminds me of Sting. Another lesbian from the back stands. Throw back your mustache! Joe Flank, a genuine car crash of a man in a Flank's heating and air branded jacket, jumps up and throws his devil horns in the air. Play dick move! Joe Flank thrusts his finger beneath his nose and executes a Dick Moves pelvis thrust. A table of lesbians think this is hilarious and join in. Dick Moves! Uh, Steady now. Here's the good part. Dick stoically tries his best to continue, but a lesbian knocks the guitar amp out of its socket with her gyrating hindquarters. Dick stops playing. His head thuds against the mic. The Flamborough head sign lilts and flutters. Covering Dick's head. Dick moves! Dick moves! Dick moves! Dick moves! Dick moves! Dick moves. Oh, Dick fuck moves. me. Dick takes a long, slow breath in. The crowd, still chanting before him, raises his head, grabs his acoustic guitar, and forces a smile. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Everybody wants to see Dick moves. I got on the moon. The lesbians are the first to lose their shit as they mount and gyrate on the bar and tables. Gavin has his gay brother on FaceTime. He raises his phone facing the stage. The brother dances flamboyantly, losing his shit. All the fellas like it when Dick moves. Everybody wants to see Dick moves. Dick has the room masterfully in the palm of his hand until he sees Sven and Rod quietly make an exit. He has to follow this up with something. He turns to Barnaby like a deer in headlights. What do I do now? Play Flamborough Head. They hate the ship, they hate the town, they hate the fucking whale. Dick, the song isn't about a whale. It's about home. Lose the props, lose the backing tracks. They're ready to listen now. Just, just sing about home. Dick looks at the audience weighing his chances. The audience, their desire for Dick Moves sated, go pin drop quiet. Dick raises his guitar once again. As Dick looks out across the audience, he locks eyes with Fifi, and suddenly all the song's meaning falls into place. Fifi glows with happiness. Hi, Dad. I have 
a girl, she's the one Waiting for me like she's always done And I swear, I swear, this is the time I won't be long There's a place where the sun shines down And we dance, we dance like I'm the only one around I'm coming home I'm coming home Don't you know they love me back home I'm coming home I'm coming home Don't you know they love me back home The show continues like this for the rest of the songbook. Dick playing a stripped-down version of the musical. It has great moments, some great songs, but also a lot of Dick's trademark slapdashery and reliance on name recognition. The show is mostly shit, but Dick is a showman, and he delights as he strums on top of the tables and dazzles as he weaves through the crowd. As the last notes die, there's a moment's silence, and the entire bar jumps to their feet, cheering. Fifi looks to Gavin, who raises a mug to Dick. Barnaby is in tears of joy. It is only Marty who looks confused by the whole affair. Whatever this was, it worked. And it was a lot of fun. I'm Dick Redford. Thank you. After most of the crowd is filtered out and the lights dimmed, Dick props himself up at the bar drinking something hard and brown. Barnaby is on one side, Fifi and Marty on the other. The baby sleeps in her car seat propped up on a bar stool. Everyone looks pretty drunk except Marty. The last couple of lesbians in the pub come over and accost Dick. Love the show, Dick. Only thing that was missing was the mustache. We sign my tits. She pulls down her top, revealing an expansive chest. How could a gentleman refuse such an offer? Dick takes her pen and signs a giant signature. Joe Flank nips in and hands them a brochure. Fifteen percent off if you come to Flank's. Thank you, Mr. Flank. Joe gives Dick the devil horns again as Dick graciously steers him away from their group. Well, that was worse than when I played Macaulay Culkin's Sweet Sixteen. No, no, it was amazing. You totally turned the room around with Dick moves. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And that song about coming home was beautiful. Bloody Sven and Rod didn't even stay for it, bastards. And what's the point of doing something beautiful if no one's there to see it? We were there... And I enjoyed it a million times more than any stadium gig you've ever done. Well, here's to shitty pubs and shitty management. Oi! Dick's phone rings. The caller ID reads, Sven. Do you think we should continue this emotional moment? Maybe for one more ring? There's at least two more before it goes to voicemail. Get the phone, Dick. Dick snatches the phone from the bar and scampers outside to take the call. You left, you fucker! You missed the really good bit. Oh! Oh, really? Back at the house, Dick, Barnaby, Marty, and Fifi stumble in, spirits high. Fifi gives her dad a hug. Dick pulls a bottle from his jacket. Uh-huh. Fear not, I've more... medium dry kava. I think I might have reached my celebration limit for tonight. Ah, uh, bollocks you have! I've got more to celebrate! Dick's mischievous expression gives everyone pause. There's a rabbit about to be pulled from a hat. What do you mean? Aha! Not only were my manager and former bandmate here tonight, but so was the head of the Deutsche Telekom! You're changing your phone provider? A tour! A planet cool tour! Barnaby begins oddly nodding and making strange squealing noises. 30th anniversary! German, Austrian, possibly a German-speaking bit of Switzerland tour! <laughs> oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Barnaby, stop, please! <laughs> Barnaby, you're ruining the moment. Please shut up! Right, pretend he's not here! Marty unassumingly celebrates with Dick and Barnaby until he spots the look on his wife's face. She's crushed and betrayed. Stop the tour bus with champagne, Italian prostitutes, and Canadian prescription drugs because Dick Redford's back in the game! 
Dick does a little victory spin and comes face to face with Fifi. He freezes. Fifi removes her old tour laminate, hands it to Dick, and sadly, silently, leaves the room. Marty hustles after her. Fifi! Come on, love! Dick examines Fifi's backstage pass. A picture of Dick in a cut-off t-shirt and mustache. Access all areas for the Dick Redford Millennium Fever Tour. He turns the pass over. On the other side is taped a fading picture of him and an 11-year-old Fifi. Arms around each other, smiling. Dick sadly takes in the picture. All the time lost. But then, slowly turns it over. He looks at his younger, mustached face. Closes his eyes. Dick Moves, a pod play in four parts. Part two, starring Gabriel Hogan, Inga Codronel, Hugh Ross, Linda Borg, Tim Blake, Joel Elliott, Dave Harris, and Ned Douglas. The pod play was written by David B. Harris and Ned Douglas. Original music by Ned Douglas. Lyrics by Ned Douglas and David B. Harris. Additional audio mix by writer Wolf Hogan. Additional vocals by Ryan Malloy. Our website is thepodplay.com. Look for our other productions wherever you download or listen to podcasts.